this video, I'm just going to demonstrate how to balance your loads in an alarm system. For example, here you see I've what we call expander boards. That means that this is only half of an alarm system. And there you can see all these red wires and all the black wires. And there at the bottom here, there are some more red wires and some more black wires. And all of that is being fed by a single power supply. And here is the power supply I'll just show you now. There you can see I've got a single power supply and that is feeding this whole section of the alarm system. So that means that all the sensors, here I've got eight zones, another eight zones. Um, here I have a remote receiver. They take like 40 milliamps to operate. They use frequently, plus the current that's needed to just keep this in the uh, on position. Then I have a little relay board there that uses another 40, amp, 40 milliamps. So all of these devices require power and some of these are beams. Now beams use quite a bit of current compared to your normal PRR sensor. So what do you do in order to make your alarm have a long backup time? So the first thing you want to do is work out what your current backup time is. Now if I disconnect the entire positive rail, you see here is my um, power coming from my battery bank. Here it is. This is coming from my battery bank and it happens to be an 18 amp hour battery. So what I'd have to do is measure the current and see what the drain is on that battery. So I'll just use an ammeter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the infeed from my uh, battery bank. So this is my battery bank wire. This is coming from my 18 amp power supply and I want to measure the current that is feeding this whole setup. That means these two expanders, the remote receiver and all these little red wires coming from all the little PRRs and outdoor sensors. So I'm just going to disconnect the positive and I'm going to measure what the total drain is on this 18 amp hour battery. Then I will work out the standby time and see if I need to extend that. Right, so I'm just adding an ammeter in series. There's my ammeter. You can see there's common amps. It's on the amps and I'm just going to put this on the positive rail. Right, so there we can see I've added the ammeter in series. You can see there is the common amps. I've opened the circuit. This is the wires from the battery bank and you can see, look at that, 0.97 uh, amps. So that's almost an amp and just keep in mind that I also have a little relay board there and there's a siren connected to it and that uses almost half an amp. So if this thing was on load, when I say on load, I mean the uh, receiver being activated, the relay, the, um, the Siren, this will go to about 1.4 amps, and I can even demonstrate that to you. Okay, you can see the relay activating now, and what's going to happen is it's going to pulse that siren. It's not even staying on fully, it's just pulsing it. Check it at 1.48 amps, as I promised. Okay, so there you can see it's almost 1 amp. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to do the calculation and tell you how many hours you'll get on a 18 amp hour battery or a 17 amp hour battery when it's drawing one amp and keep in mind if you're activating your sensors if you're activating the uh, remote receiver that'll easily go over an amp so I'll just work it out for you now okay so here I have a little spreadsheet and what I've done is I've put the battery capacity at 18 amp hours I know that it's more common to find a 17 amp hour battery uh, but I have an 18 amp hour battery so I'm going with what I've got uh, many people might only have a 7 amp hour battery and you can see how it affects this little spreadsheet all right so the current drain is 0.95 amps and then this is my hour backup uh, time is tw just under 12 and a half hours keeping in mind that that is a continuous current remember it does go go above that uh, when the siren activates and, and remotes are being pressed so you can see how it affects the backup time now let me just tell you about the formula I've made I've taken the capacity of the battery at 18 amp hours divided by the load is 0.95 and I've times it by a little derating factor of 65% meaning you're not going to get the um, uh, specified amp hours of this battery on load it decays and then it suddenly cuts off you see a lot of these power supplies are made in such a way that when the battery voltage gets below say 8 volts it actually cuts off the 
the current well it actually cuts off the 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 uh, power supply to the alarm panel because it's protecting the battery lead acid batteries don't do well when they are fully discharged so that's one of the reasons why i've derated it at 65 percent. so let's say you only get 65 percent of that battery capacity you're only going to have a two, just under 12 and a half hour uh, backup time and then keeping in mind that as the battery ages depending on how you've used it and charged it, let's drop that by another 30%. So I've times it by 70%, dropping it by 30, keeping in mind that you could probably drop it by 50. So these are best case scenarios. So we'll get about 12 hours on that uh, one battery backup supply if the current drain is 0.95 amps. And uh, the goal here is to reduce that uh, drain so that we can almost double the backup time but then how do we do that we need to share that load onto another battery power supply and that's why I have this little spreadsheet with different battery banks in this little insulation trying to uh, match all the battery um, backup times and you can see this one is a bit of a weak link and that is one of the reasons why I'm going to add another battery backup supply and that's what I'm going to show you proving that I'll reduce the current which is quite obvious but I'm just showing you the method in terms of measuring the current and how to go about it. All right, let's get back to the video. Okay, so the, the key here now is to divide that. So I've installed a second battery backup, and I'll show it to you now. So here is a second backup power supply, also 18 amps. So now I'm going to share the load. Now you saw it was one amp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put maybe half an amp on the one battery bank and half an amp on the other battery bank, giving me a, a double backup time. It actually works out to be a little bit more than double because of the uh, nature of lead acid batteries and how they fail. All right, so now I'm going to do that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the loads. Now you can see uh, there is a load and there is a load. I'm going to grab all these red wires and actually just measure what the load from all these sensors are. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unplug that. And let's grab those red wires there. All right, so what I've got here is a complete uh, bundle of positive wires that are coming from at least eight you know, at least eight different sensors and I'm going to measure the current drain on those uh, that would feed those sensors. So I'm just going to connect it back to the positive. You see now I've opened the circuit and let's see how many milliamps uh, those sensors are pulling. Look at that. 0.5 amps. So right there I've just found 0.5 amps which I can now load onto the other battery bank therefore sharing the load giving me double the backup time. So what I'm going to do now is quickly wire that into the other battery bank. Um, here is the wire already coming from that battery bank and then I'm literally just going to connect the positives and the negative to all those sensors. Remember the alarm sensors, the PRs, doesn't matter where they get the power from. Uh, so that allows me to use another power supply and there we go so I'm going to connect that up right now Right, so there I've connected it up. Uh, you can see the uh, negatives from all the sensors, well, most of the sensors, and the red from most of the sensors. Just make sure that you get the correct positives and negatives so that uh, each one of these represents a complete pair. So you can see how they've come in here, they've been wired like that, so they are, each one of these will make a complete sensor or feed a complete sensor. All right, so, all right, so here comes the wire. This is going to the second power bank, and there are the wires. So all I've got to do is make sure that I get the positive and negative correct, and I'll just use a multimeter. Right, I just put on continuity. Okay, I want to get the negative first. Let's just check. All right, so that is the negative. So I know which one is going to the negative terminal on my power bank. 
here is the power bank, there is the negative. And just to give you an idea what this is doing, um, if you look at the voltage that is coming out here, it should be about 13 and a half volts, positive, negative. You can see there 13.6 volts. Um, and if you switch the power off, uh, this will stay on. So if I had to switch the power off, power is now off, uh, didn't even change, literally unplug it from the, the outlet there, power doesn't change, okay, 13.55, okay, so then switch it back on, and you can see uh, there it went 13.65, all right, so this is going to now feed the sensors, while the other power bank over here, the other power supply over here is going to feed the boards um, and other uh, alarm suppliers. So you can see I've still got some other sensors here. You can see there's still some populated uh, positive and negatives here. So already uh, <clears throat> at half an amp, I've, I'm going to really take half an amp off this one, giving me about a 50% 50, 50 division here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure uh, the current that is going to come through this uh, from this power supply. So let's power it up and let's check. Uh, yes. Okay, so now the moment of truth, just to show you how I've uh, partitioned or separated the loads, I'm going to plug, I'm going to connect this uh, other side of the ammeter just to the battery bank. Uh, to complete the circuit, remember this is in series, and you're going to see a current there, you're going to see 0.39, uh, call it 0.4 amps, yeah, well there it climbed to 0.4, you might be wondering why it's not 0.5, okay, what I had to do is, I just had to separate the load by adding one of the sensors had to be put here, um, and that is the reason, uh, that's very specific to this make of alarm system, this happens to be called an IDS alarm system, so I never showed that on the camera, but was the power for this little board just because it, it works on a, a serial interface and it doesn't like it when it gets different uh, voltages. So I've, I've I just made sure that both these boards in terms of its RS, uh, the, the serial interface were powered by the same. So that is why you see one little black wire fed there. Um, I did separate that. Sorry, I didn't show it in the camera, but that, that, that's not the point. The point is, is that it was you, the, the total consumption of this section of the alarm was one amp. I've managed to take 400 milliamps away from the one battery supply so that now they're sharing. The one will be at about 600 milliamps and the other one will be at 400 milliamps. So I'll just finish the installation now. So that means this positive just needs to come here onto this uh, backup power supply. Okay, so to sum up, I had what one battery uh, power supply or one battery, and now I added, I duplicated, so that this would have almost more than double the backup time because as you can see, this alarm is getting quite uh, heavily populated. So now I added another battery bank. I do have a video showing how to install one of these. And this is giving me another 18 uh, amp hour battery. And now I've kind of spread the load. So you can see here's the one battery power supply and the other one is coming over there directly onto the board um, and I'll show you that current so you can see what impact has been made now that I've lifted 400 milliamps so effectively we should see here um, on this multimeter we should see 600 milliamps which is now being uh, um, supplied by the one battery bank but the one power supply instead of the one amp or the 960 milliamps Okay, so I'm just going to open this one and show you. All right, so I'm going to complete the circuit now. Okay, there we go, 0.5 amps. Um, so that 0.5 plus the 0.4 gives you the 0.9 uh, and that's what we had in the beginning. 
and that's what we had in the beginning, the 0.9 minus the 0.4 is the 0.5. It's slightly less loading now. Um, there have been some changes. People are not walking around here. So uh, the sensors are not being as activated. Uh, but there you go. So that will be about between 0.5 and 0.6 depending on people's movements and the sensors out in the outdoor area. As, as I said, some people are no longer moving around. It's now a bit of time has passed. Okay, so there you can see I've got 0.5 on the one back uh, backup power supply and on the other one I've got um, 0.4 and that gives me 0.9. Okay, so there is the finished product. You can see there was the first uh, power supply. Now I've added another one. This one is sitting at 0.5 amps. This one is sitting at 0.4, keeping in mind that the siren and the smoke detectors on this one. So when the alarm activates, this one is going to be loaded more. So that makes sense because this one is uh, in terms of Continuous current 0.5, this one in terms of continuous current 0.4, but in terms of peak current, this will go up to about 0.9 because you add half an amp, uh, so 0.4 plus 5, so 0.9 when the siren activates. And then keeping in mind these other peripherals do uh, fluctuate the current, but overall I've now more than, probably just more than doubled the backup time. Okay, and then just make sure you keep your wiring neat. And there you can see, even if I switch it all off, um, that nothing will happen to the alarm. I get way over 20 hours or way over the amount that I've uh, explained. Okay, so there we go. I had an original battery power supply. It was an 18 amp hour. As I showed you, now I added a second one and I was able to drop that 0.95 amps to 0.5 on the one and it was 0.4 on the other. Now, obviously these amounts do fluctuate because it depends on the uh, what people are doing in on the premises. And as I said, uh, some uh, sensors activating and, and gates uh, uh, sensors being open, then what happens is this current does change. So let's just say it was 0.5 and 0.4 as we've measured at the end of the video. You can see that the same battery capacity, but look at the backup time going from just over 12 hours to 23 hours and this one at 29 hours. So now I've effectively doubled the backup time and in real life scenarios, it is doubling and I'll tell you why, because these batteries, they're funny, they, um, the power supplies want to cut them off at a critical voltage because it does destroy the battery if you take a a lead acid battery and let it go completely flat so the intelligent power supplies will actually cut off the power um, and that's why a lower current actually is better a lower current drain is actually better for the battery battery can actually respond uh, better so it's not a linear response and that's why i said it's actually more than double the backup time although it's not showing it on this little spreadsheet because this is just kind of doing a linear response okay so what you need to know is that i was able to split the load Similarly, how you do on a uh, electrical DB supply, maybe you've got a three-phase power supply, you'll have to split your loads. Well, the same on this battery, a little DC power supply here. I put 0.5 here and 0.4 here, now bringing these backup times into a much higher range. All right, so that's how I did it, and I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Cheers.